Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, welcome to another class of engineering mechanics. Uh, today's lecture will be a follow up of our previous lecture in which we started discussing about the equilibrium of bodies. And uh, we said it that uh, the first step in, in order to find out the uh, unknown quantities when a body is in equilibrium. So the first step is to draw the free body diagram and we learned uh, in the previous lecture that how can we draw the free body diagram. The key idea was that uh, first of all we have to isolate the body of interest from all of its surrounding the supports and then we have to show all the applied loads and after that we have to show all the reaction forces the forces which are exerted by the the, the supports the cables and other different types of support the in support the roller support and the fixed support or any other type of support uh, once we have done this thing, so we have the free body diagram, which is showing us all the forces which are acting on the body. The applied forces as well as the external effects of those forces are also shown or reaction forces are also shown on the body. So that is the first step. And once we have the free body diagram, then we are able to find out the uh, unknown quantities uh, using the equilibrium equation. So our today's lecture will be how to find out different unknown quantities and the reaction forces of the supports if the body is in equilibrium. So let's start with the lecture. So we will start with the simple case uh, when the system of forces are concurrent, that is they are passing from the same point. The line of action of the forces are passing uh, from the same point. So our today's objective is to determine the unknown forces, that is the reactions or applied loads or any other unknown quantities in coplanar concurrent force system under static equilibrium. We define static equilibrium that if a system of forces acting on a body keeps the body in state of rest or in a state of uniform motion along a straight line, then that system of forces is said to be in static equilibrium or simply we can call it as equilibrium. Mathematically, if the body is in equilibrium, it must satisfy three conditions. The three conditions are that the sum of the forces must be equal to zero. That is the sum of the forces in the X direction. If you are talking in terms of the coordinate system, so the sum of the forces in the X direction must be equal to zero. And when I say sum of the forces, so I said it earlier, so it includes all the forces that are acting on the body, means the applied forces and the reaction forces. So all the forces, sum of all the forces in the X direction must be equal to zero. Similarly, the sum of all the forces in the Y direction must also be equal to zero. And additionally, the sum of moments or the rotational effects in the body must be uh, equal to zero. And if these three conditions are satisfied, we can say that, that the body is in equilibrium. So how to find out or how to solve the problem of equilibrium? First of all, draw the free body diagram in which isolate the body from its surrounding and show all the applied forces and reaction forces and couple forces or couple moments acting on the body. <clears throat> then write down the equilibrium equations in terms of forces, summation Fx, summation Fy, or uh, in terms of couples, summation of M that appear on the free body diagram and then solve those equations to find out the unknown quantities. So this is a three step procedure. First step is to draw the free body diagram, then apply the equilibrium condition. And third step, you have to uh, solve those equilibrium equations to find out the unknown quantities. Uh, you can in, uh, instead of uh, solving it mathematically, you can also solve it graphically. Graphically, you can use the triangle law or polygon law of forces. In the triangle law, if there are uh, three forces in equilibrium, so then they must form a closed triangle when represented in a tip to tail arrangement. So triangle law is only valid for uh, three forces which are in equilibrium. So if you have F1, F2 and F3, if they are, these are concurrent forces. And if I represent them in a tip to toe kind of configuration, so they must form a closed triangle if the body is in equilibrium. And if they are not forming a closed triangle, it means the body is not in equilibrium. And if there are more than three forces, so then we can use polygon law, in which case, again, if we arrange the forces in a tip to tail arrangement, so they must form a closed polygon. 
so uh, if it forms a closed polygon so we, we will be sure that the body is in equilibrium and then simply uh, finding out the uh, lengths of different vectors we can find out the unknown quantities or the unknown forces <clears throat> uh, one another uh, theorem uh, which is required uh, and we must know about it uh, we may be needing it uh, during the solution of problems uh, that is the lemes lemes theorem so if a system of three forces if they are in equilibrium like the three forces in uh, concurrent forces and if these three forces are in equilibrium then each force of the system is proportional to the sine of the angle between the other two forces so each force of the system is proportional to the is proportional to the sine of the angle which is made by the other two forces so f is proportion f1 is proportional to alpha f2 is proportional to beta and f3 is proportional to gamma and this implies this particular condition that is f1 divided by sine of alpha is equals to f2 divided by sine of beta and this is equals to f3 divided by sine of gamma so if there are three forces which are in equilibrium and they are concurrent forces so this is according to the lemes theorem we get this equality but note down that lemes theorem is only valid when all the three forces are directed away from the point of concurrency or they are directed towards the point of concurrency so you can only use this theorem when these all three forces are away from the point of concurrency or they are pointing toward the point of concurrency uh, in case of coplanar concurrent force system the following equations can be used more conveniently to determine the unknown reactions so in reality we have three equilibrium equations summation fx summation fy and summation of moment but if we are talking about the <clears throat> concurrent force system so then we have we will be left with only two conditions summation fx equals to 0 summation fy equal to 0 because summation of moments will always be uh, equal to 0 because the moments created by uh, these concurrent forces about any point will be 0 so uh, the third equation summation of moment is no is of no use for us okay because the line of action of the two forces is passing through the same point so if we take the moment let's say at the point of concurrency so the moment created by f1 force and f2 force will be zero so the third equation is of no use so for concurrent force system we have only two useful uh, equations of equilibrium that we can use to find out the unknown quantities so that is the uh, basic idea uh, so it's a three step procedure free boy diagram equilibrium equation and solution of equilibrium equation so we will follow these three uh, steps to solve the problem so uh, in order to further demonstrate the basic concept let's look into the first problem the device shown is used to straighten the frames of wrecked autos so this is a device which is used to straighten the frames of wrecked autos determine the tension of each segment of the chain ab and bc if the force which the hydraulic cylinder db exerts on point b is 3.5 kN as shown so there is a system which is used to Uh, straighten the uh, the frames of the wrecked autos we are required to find out the forces in this chain ab and the chain bc and it is also given in the question that there is a hydraulic cylinder and this hydraulic cylinder is exerting a force of 3.5 kN at point b and in the previous lecture i have told you that when the forces are uh, acting when the uh, when the arrowheads of the two forces are away from in a member so then they are uh, we can say that that the member is in tension uh, sorry in compression so for example if this is a body and if we want to show that the member is in tension so we have to show the forces such that the arrow heads are pointing to uh, towards each other which means that 
the the bottom force this force is pulling this point similarly this force component is pulling a point over here okay so whenever we want to show a tension in a member the arrow heads are pointing towards each other and whenever for example if this is a point and there is another point and this is the way the forces are compressing that point or pushing that point so then we send we can say that the member is in compression so this force component is trying to push this point or this force is trying to push this point so now you can see that this the two forces uh, the arrow heads of the two forces are away from each other so in this case this member is in compression so we can readily see that uh, that the hydraulic cylinder in this particular example is in compression because it is trying to push the point b so now in order to solve this problem to find out the forces in member ab and bc we have to draw the free body diagram of this uh, structure let's draw the free body diagram of point b so if i look into the point b so this is point b so i have isolated the point of interest and then i have to show the forces so the force exerted by the hydraulic cylinder on point b is like this so let's this is the force db and then the chains let's say the chains are in tension so they are pulling point b so this chain is pulling point b and this chain is also pulling point b so now we have if i remove chain ab so i will show the force and if i remove the chain bc i will again show the force so this is the free body diagram of point b so this is what is shown over here so this is the free body diagram of point b this is the 3.5 kN force exerted by the hydraulic cylinder at point b the force in the chain ab let's represent it with fab the force in the chain bc let's represent it with fbc in this case as you can see that i have shown a force such that it is pushing point b so uh, as i have told you earlier that uh, the directional force doesn't really make any difference if the direction is opposite to what you have assumed you will get a negative sign at the end of your calculation and that's it okay so you don't need to worry about the direction so whether you uh, take a force away from point b or towards point b it uh, you will get to know the real direction of the force at the end of your calculation so if you get a negative sign of the force it means that your assumed direction is incorrect so now this is the free body diagram and we have to find out the forces fab and fbc first of all let's find out these angle alpha and angle beta which these forces makes with the vertical uh, the dimensions are known to us so this distance is 400 mm and the height is 450 mm so angle alpha is changing in words of 400 divided by 450 which comes out to be 41.63 similarly uh, angle beta comes out to be tangent inverse of 250 divided by 250 divided by 450 which comes out to be 29.06 degrees so now the angles are known to us and now we are ready to write down the equilibrium equations so we have two equilibrium equations summation fx and summation fy <clears throat> so first of all apply sum of all the horizontal forces must be equal to zero <clears throat> uh, let's take and the sign convention let's take the forces towards the right are taken to be positive and forces towards the left are taken towards uh, are taken to be they are assumed to be negative <clears throat> so this is minus fab so and then the horizontal component of this force plus 3.5 sign of 41.63 degrees and the 
uh, the x component of this force FBC is in the negative direction. So FBC sine 29.06 degrees. And it must be equal to zero if the body is in equilibrium. So we get one equation, FAB equals to 2.325 minus 0.486 FBC. Then apply the second equilibrium equation, sum of the forces in the y direction must be equal to zero. So the y component of this force plus y component of this force. So 3.5 cos 41.63 plus cos, uh, uh, FBC cos 29.06. So simply from this, I can get FBC equals to minus three kilonewton. So I know the force in one of the chain, which is minus three kilonewton. The negative sign indicates that the direction of the force in member BC is incorrect. So I have assumed an incorrect direction of the force. In reality, the force is in this direction. Okay. But do not change the direction of the force. Otherwise, you will get confused and you, will, you may make mistakes during your calculation. So what you have to do is do not change the direction if you get a negative sign, but keep the negative sign in rest of the calculation. So for example, if I'm not interested to calculate the force in member AB, so I will use this equation to find out the force in member AB. So 2.325 minus 0.486. I have already calculated the force in member BC, which is minus 3 kilonewton. So instead of putting plus 3, I will put minus 3. Okay? So I'm not changing the direction, and I'm keep, I am keeping the sign of the force. So this is what I have done over here. 2.325 minus 0.486 times minus 3. And with this, after solving this, I get force in member AB is equals to 3.78 kilonewton. The positive sign indicates that the direction which I've assumed for the force in member AB is correct. So this is how you can solve the problem. Uh, it is always good to check your numerical results. So for that, you can always apply the equilibrium uh, conditions. Uh, that is the sum of the moments must be equal to zero, uh, but I will not go into that detail uh, at this moment. Uh, let's leave it uh, for the next lecture. Okay. So for concurrent force system, we have two available equations, summation Fx and summation Fy. Choose some relevant sign convention and write down the equation of equilibrium. Solve those equations of equilibrium to find out the unknown quantities. Any question or queries till this point? Okay. So then let's move to the next problem. Now pay attention. So a system and structure is shown ABBC which consists of a, uh, a bar AC and a cable AB, a force, a vertical force of magnitude P, which is unknown, is applied at point A. The first part of the question is that if P is equal to 100 Newton, determine the forces supported by the cable AB and the bar AC. Okay. So who is going to solve this problem? Can anyone show it to me uh, how the free boy diagram of this body looks like? Because the first step in the solution is to draw the free body diagram. Gee, anybody can show me the free body diagram.
सर आपका माइक बंद है जी एनी वन एल्स हैव शोन किसी ने सॉल्व किया है फ्री बॉय डायग्राम यस सर जी जरा दिखा दे सर मेरे फेस पे जी सर फेस पे मुझे आप मुझे चैट में समेशन एफ एक्स की इक्वेशन लिखकर बता दे समेशन एफ एक्स की इक्वेशन लिखकर बता दे सम ऑफ एफ एक्स इज इक्वल टू जीरो ठीक है तो मुझे इसकी इक्वेशन लिखकर बता दे जरा और दिस पर्टिकुलर केस व्हाट विल बी समेशन एफ एक्स की इक्वेशन क्या होगी चैट बॉक्स में जरा मुझे लिखकर बता दे लेट्स कॉल दिस फोर्स टू बी एफ ए बी एंड दिस फोर्स इज एफ ए सी and this is force p of magnitude 100 newton write down the equation of summation of fx equals to 0 जी हु कैन राइट डाउन द इक्वेशन ऑफ समेशन ऑफ फोर्सेज इन हॉरिजॉन्टल डायरेक्शन ओके आई सिंपली एफ ए बी कॉज थर्टी प्लस एफ ए कॉज फोर्टी फाइव इक्वल्स टू जीरो ठीक है बिल्कुल ठीक है शाहबाश थैंक यू सो मच Uh, similarly f uh, summation of forces in the y direction anyone else shahbash mahmudul hasan thank you so much and it must be equal to zero if the body is in equilibrium so uh, these two forces the sum of these two forces must be equal to zero uh f1 साइन थीटा साइन थर्टी अच्छा चले अब ये जरा देख लें थोड़ा सा इसमें गलत है एनी वन एल्स हु कैन राइट डाउन द इक्वेशन फॉर सम ऑफ द फोर्सेज इन द वर्टिकल डायरेक्शन एनी वन एल्स हु कैन राइट डाउन अच्छा जी अब ठीक है Uh, आप ठीक uh, uh, लिख रहे हैं लेकिन थोड़ा सा uh, गलत है सो इफ इफ यू वांट टू राइट डाउन द सम ऑफ फोर्सेस इन द वर्टिकल डायरेक्शन मस्ट बी इक्वल टू जीरो सो इन दिस केस द एफ वाई कंपोनेंट ऑफ लेट्स लेट्स अस्यूम दैट दी वी आर टेकिंग द अपवर्ड फोर्सेस टू बी पॉजिटिव so the we can see that the the y component of fab force is acting upward so we have fab cos of 30 uh then we can see that the y component of this fac force is acting downwards so that will be with the negative sign minus fac 
uh, sorry, this is sine 30. Sine 30 minus FAC sine 45. And the force P is also acting downward. So minus P and it must be equal to zero. So this is the complete equation. Okay. So simply uh, you get two equations, one from summation Fx, the other from summation Fy. Solve these two equations simultaneously to find out the forces, unknown forces in member AB and in member BC. Uh, let's move to the part B of this problem that if the cable AB can support a tensile force of 1200 Newton before breaking and the bar AC can support a compressive force of 1600 Newton before buckling, determine the largest force P that can be applied. Now the problem is certain, uh, slightly different. The strengths of different members is given to us. That is, member AC can support a maximum load of 1600 Newton. If the load exceeds in this member, if FAC exceeds 1600 Newton, so then this bar will buckle. Or if the force in the cable AB exceeds uh, 1200 Newton, so then this cable will break. So what is the, the safest load P that I can apply on this structure such that there, will, there is no failure in member AB and in member AC. Okay. So in order to prevent the failure, what is that safest maximum load that I can apply on this structure? Uh, again, in order to solve this problem, uh, draw the free body diagram and uh, write down the equilibrium equation. So first step is to draw the free body diagram. The free body diagram of, again, if I am looking into the equilibrium of joint A, so the free body diagram of joint A is exactly similar to what we have drawn for part A of this problem. So the free body diagram is exactly the same. So we have a downward force, then we have a force in the member F, uh, AC, we have a force in member AB. The angles are known. Uh, so uh, this free body diagram is now complete and we are now ready to solve it. Then the next step is to write down the equilibrium equations. The summation of Fx must be equal to zero and summation of Fy must be equal to zero. Summation Fx equal to zero gives us FAB cos 30 plus FAC cos 45 equals to zero. Yes, I have written it. Then summation of Fy must be equal to zero. The second equilibrium equation FAB sine 30 minus FAC sine 45 minus P equals to zero. So these are the two equations. And we have to solve these two equations to find out the maximum safe load P that I can apply on this structure. Now you can note that the, the maximum load that each member can take is given to us in the question. So most of the students, what they will do, that they will simply put FAB equals to uh, 1600 and FAC equals to 1200 Newton. And they will solve this, for example, they will put FAB equals to 1600 and FAC equals to 1200. And they will solve this equation number six for P. But that is incorrect because they have assumed that both the members, F, uh, the member AB and member AC reach to the failure at the same time. So if you are putting the maximum load of member AB and maximum load of member AC in equation number six, you are assuming that both these members will fail at the same time, which is not true. Why it is not true? Because the forces in these two members are different. For example, let's say the force in this member comes out to be uh, two kilonewton and in this member is four kilonewton. So it means that this member is taking more load. So it will reach to its failure point more earlier than member AC. So the failure in the two members does not take place at the same time. And it depends upon the forces in each member and also the strength of each member. I can also see not only the forces in the two members can be different, but also I can see that the strength of the two members is also different. So when you are putting 
if ab equals to 1600 if ac equals to 1200 you are assuming that both the members fail at the same time in reality both the members do not fail at the same point at the same time why because the internal forces in each members are different and also the strength of each member is different so now how to solve this problem the best way to solve this problem is first of all write down the force fab in terms of p and also write down the force fac in terms of p so uh, what you can do is for example um, uh, from here you can find out the value of fab so fab is equals to p plus fac sin 45 divided by sin 30 and put this value of fab in equation number 5 so then you will get an equation of fac in terms of p and you will find out fac is equals to minus 0.8966p similarly you can also express fab in terms of p as well for example here you can find out the value of fac from equation number 5 fac is equals to minus fab cos 30 divided by cos 45 put this value of fac in equation number 6 you will get equation of fab in terms of p so the after writing the equilibrium equation the next step is to write down the member forces in terms of the applied load p theek okay? hai once you have written it then use these two equation and say that that let's assume that the force in member ab reaches to its maximum strength 1200 newton so if the force in member ab is equal to 12, 1200 newton then what is the safe value of load p and if the force in member ac reaches to its failure strength then what is the value of load p so first of all i assume that f the member ab will fail and when it will fail when fab becomes equal to its maximum strength so when fab is equal to its maximum strength what is the value of load p or when member ac reaches to its maximum strength what is the safe value of load p so i will get two values of load p based on the failure of two members and then select the smallest of these two values so smallest of these two values is 1640 newton i cannot select 1790 newton because member ab can take a load of 1640 newton so if i apply a load of 1790 newton on the structure the member ab will fail okay so that's why i cannot take the largest load i i i, I always i have to select the smallest load to to design a safe structure okay so any question at this point because this is a very important uh question so any thing which is not clear to you guys एफ ए सी की वैल्यू नेगेटिव क्यों ली है बिकॉज एफ ए सी दर्टिकल कम्पोनेंट ऑफ एफ ए सी इज एक्टिंग डाउनवर्ड टेकन एफ ए सी टू बी नेगेटिव दिस इज एफ ए सी एंड एफ ए सी दर्टिकल कम्पोनेंट ऑफ एफ ए सी इज एक्टिंग डाउनवर्ड सो दैट्स वाई आई टेकन इट नेगेटिव okay uh, if problem 7.2 is clear to you guys so then let's look into problem 7.3 the cable and the pulley system shown is used by a camper to hoist uh, a backpack into a tree to keep it out of reach of bears if cables ab and ac have breaking strength of 200 pounds and cable dae has a breaking strength of 100 pounds determine the largest weight that may be lifted so there is a backpack of weight w and it is supported by a cable cable dae and it is also supported by some more cables ab and ac the failure strength of member ab is given to us uh, the failure strength of member ab is 200 pounds 
the failure strength the maximum load that member ac can take is also 200 pounds the cable will break if the load exceed 100 pounds so the maximum load by the cable is also given to us which is 100 pounds we are required to find out the maximum safe weight w that can be supported by these three cables okay so again it's a problem of strength so again you can find uh, you can uh, imagine in your mind that the first step will always be to draw the free body diagram the second step will be to write down the equilibrium equation the third step will be to write down the member forces the member force ab ac and da and ae in terms of w okay so this is the third step and then you will say that if this member reaches to its maximum strength what will be the value of w if this member reaches to its maximum strength what will be the value of w and if the cable reaches to its maximum strength what will be the value of w so you have three members with three strengths definitely three equations with three values of w and then you have to select the smallest weight w out of those three uh, calculated values of the weight w so let's uh, look into the problem uh, for example uh, if i draw the free body diagram of joint a okay so first of all draw the joint a then there is a force due to this cable so you can assume any direction for the force so let's take this is one force then you have a force in the member ab then you have this cable force um, then you can take so we have two more cables over here so draw these forces okay so this is the free ball diagram of joint a so let's call this force to be fac this force is fab this is the force in the member uh, or in the cable and all these three members are cables so and they are running through a smooth frictionless pulley so the force in this part of the cable is equals to the force in this part of the cable and is it is equals to in this part of the cable so all the three parts of the cable will carry the same force because the same single cable is running throughout its length over the frictionless pulley so the forces in, e in each part of the cable will be the same so let's represent the force uh, with uh, let's say t so the force in this this force is t this is also t and this is also t so this is what is shown over here so this is the free body diagram of joint a similarly you can also uh, draw the free body diagram of joint e as well because definitely i have to incorporate the weight w in my calculation so if I draw the free body diagram of joint E, so there will be a downward force due to the weight of the backpack. And then there will be this way, uh, tension force in this cable and tension force T in the second cable. So this is the free body diagram of joint E. So these are the two free body diagrams. You can apply the equilibrium equations to each free body diagram separately. So if I apply the equilibrium equation summation fx equal to zero to the top free body diagram, I will get this equation. So let's take right forces to be positive and left forces to be negative. So minus TAB plus TAC cos 50. And then the x component of this force plus uh, T sine 30. So this is the equation of summation fx equal to 0. Summation fy equal to 0 minus T minus T. Then the vertical component of this T, which is minus T cos 30. And then the vertical component of this force, which is plus TAC cos 50. Plus TAC cos 50. So T is sorry, T A C sine 50. T A C sine 50 minus T minus T minus T cos 30. So this is the uh, two equilibrium equations which corresponds to this free body diagram. And I can readily see that, that there are three unknowns T A C T B T A B and T. So I need one more equation to solve this problem. 
and I can get that uh, equation from the free body diagram of joint E. So if I apply, um, I cannot apply summation Fx equal to zero because uh, there are no horizontal forces. So there is one equilibrium equation available for uh, joint E. So summation Fy equal to zero, if I take upward forces positive, downward forces negative, so plus T plus T minus W equals to zero. Plus T plus T minus W equal to zero, or uh, this implies that T is equal to W by T. So now I get three equations with three unknowns. Um, now, this is the problem of strength in which the maximum load carrying capacity of each member is given to us. So the third step is to write down each member forces in terms of W. So T is already expressed in terms of W. I have to express TAC in terms of W and I have to express TAC in terms of W. So if I look into equation number two, T equals to W by two in this equation. So I will get an equation TAC in terms of W. And that comes out to be TAC equals to 1.871 W. Uh, then take equation number one, put TAC equals to this particular value, Equation put equation number five in equation number one, and put equation number three in equation number one. So you will get an equation of TAB in terms of W, which comes out to be TAB equals to 1.452 W. So now you can see that I have expressed all the three member forces in terms of W, equation three, equation four, and equation five is expressing the member forces in terms of W. Now I can say that if the cable fails, so if T is equal to its maximum strength, what is the value of W? Then I will say if TAB equals to its maximum load, what will be the value of W? And if TAC reaches to its maximum load value, what will be the value of W? So put T equals to the maximum strength and find out W. W comes out to be 200 pound. Then put TAB equals to 200 pound in equation number four and find out the value of W, which comes out to be 138 pounds. Then put the maximum uh, load of TAC in equation number five and find out the value of W and W comes out to be 107 pounds. Select the smallest of these three values of the W and that will be the safe value of W that can be applied on that particular structure. So in this case, the smallest value is 107 pounds. So 107 pounds is the safe value, is the maximum safe value of weight W that can be applied on that particular structure. Any question till this point? So this is the last problem related to our today's lecture. Um, let's try to solve it uh, together. So the problem states that there is a small cable car which is used to transport passengers across a river. If the cable car and its contents have a mass of 400 kilogram, determine the force in cables AC and ED and the force in the bar AB. Point A is a pin support. So hopefully the problem is clear. So there is uh, a cable car which is supported by uh, a member AB and it is also supported by a couple of cables, cable AB and cable ED. Cable EB, ED is a continuous cable and it is passing through a pulley. So it means that the force in this part of the cable, that is the force in BD is equals to the force in member EB because it's the same cable and it is passing through a pulley, frictionless pulley. So the forces in each part of the cable will be the same. So find out these forces in the cable uh, AC and ED and also find out the force in the bar AB. Okay. So first step is to draw the free body diagram. Please draw the free body diagram and if you can share it with me, so well and good. So let's say this is the structure 
and if you want to draw the free body diagram so let's say first of all draw the free body diagram of joint b so at joint b i can see that uh, the joint b is supporting a load of this cable bd so there will be a force fbd then there will be a force in this part of the cable be so draw another force in this part of the cable then it is also supporting this member ab so if i remove this member ab i will get another force so these are the three forces which are acting on this member you can then name these forces so this is force fbd this is force fbe and this is force fab the force fbd makes an angle of 20 degree with the horizontal the force fbe makes an angle of 10 degrees with the horizontal and the force fab we don't know what angle it makes with the horizontal or vertical let's assume that it makes an angle of alpha with the vertical so that completes the free body diagram of joint b which is shown over here so this is the free body diagram of joint b i have shown all the forces i have labeled all the forces and i have shown all the angles which are known to me and also the angles which are unknown to me then draw the free body diagram of joint a uh so if i draw the free body diagram of joint a it is supporting a weight of this total weight of this cable car plus the weight of the man so this is weight w if i remove the cable ac i will get another force so this is another force and if i remove this member ab i will get another force so let's say this is uh, ठीक है, so this is the equilibrium of uh, joint A, and this is the free body diagram of joint A. So this is the weight W, this is the force in member uh, AC, the cable AC, TAC, and this is the force in the member TAB. And again, I don't know the uh, angle and inclination of this force. So let's say it makes an angle of alpha with the vertical. The member AC makes an angle of 20 degree with the horizontal. The weight is also given to us in the problem. Uh, and it is said that the total weight of this cable car plus the man is 400 kg multiply it with the acceleration due to gravity you will get the total force due to the weight which is acting downwards so 400 times 9.8 you will get 3924 newton force or in terms of kilonewton i can write it down 3.924 kilonewton so this is the free body diagram of joint a so step number 1 is now completed let's go to the step number 2 so please write down the equilibrium equations for uh, free body diagram at joint b so again it's a system of concurrent forces i will have two equilibrium equations summation fx and summation fy so now help me as well so if i write down the summation fx equals to 0 so summation fx if i assume the forces towards the right are positive and forces towards the left are negative so it will be p ed cos 20 minus p ed cos 10 this is and there is also the horizontal component of tab force which is acting in the right direction towards the right so plus p ab sin of alpha and this is equals to 0 so this is the equilibrium equation in the x direction note down that since uh, the cable part bd and eb are the same cable 
so the forces in this part be and the part bd will be the same so that's why i am calling te ted is equals to tbe okay i am calling tbe is equals to tbd so the forces are the same in both parts of the cable so that's why i am denoting both the forces with the same label let's write down the sum of the forces in the vertical direction so sum of fy equal to 0 so this so the vertical component of ted is acting upwards so ted sine of 20 then the vertical component of this ted force is acting downwards okay so minus ted sine of 10 the vertical component of TAB is also acting downwards. Minus TAB cos of alpha. Then this is equal to zero. So this is the equilibrium equation in the y direction. So now I have two equilibrium equations and the unknowns are TED and TAB and alpha. So there are three unknowns and I have two available equations. So it means I cannot solve the problem i need at least three equations to solve three unknowns so for that i will now write down the equilibrium equations for the free body diagram from joint a so if i look into the equilibrium in the horizontal direction for joint a i will have T A C cos 20, T A C cos 20. Then the horizontal component of T A B is acting in the negative x direction. So minus T A B sine alpha. And this is equals to zero. And that's all. Then I have sum of F Y must be equal to zero. And this gives me the vertical component of TAC is acting in the upward direction. So TAC sine of 20. The vertical component of TAB is also acting in the upward direction. So plus TAB cos of alpha. And there is a weight W which is acting downwards. So minus 3.924. And this is equals to 0. So now I have four available equations and I have how many unknowns? TAD, TAB, alpha and TAC. So I have four unknowns and four available equations. Okay. So I have four simultaneous equations to solve. You can solve it, four simultaneous equations, the method that you learn in your FEC. Uh, so you can use that to solve these four simultaneous equations to find out these four unknowns. Or if I uh, slightly look into the problem, I can simplify the problem and solve it without uh, simultaneously solving these four equations. For example, I can see that uh, let's look into this equation. So these are the four equations that we got and I have to solve these four equations simultaneously. Then, for example, if I calculate TAB sine alpha from equation number one, so TAB sine alpha is equals to TAC cos 20. And from equation number two, I can get the value of TAB cos alpha. TAB cos alpha is equals to 3.924 minus TAC sine 20. So I'll get the values of TAB sine alpha from equation number one and TAB cos alpha from equation number two. Put these values in equation number three and four. So TAB sine alpha from equation number one and TAB cos alpha from equation number two. So put these equations, equation number one and equation number two in equation number three and four. Now you will get uh, it's not mentioned over here. So you will get uh, three equations, sorry, two equations with two unknowns. Okay. So
so uh, please uh, write down the two equations and let me know okay on dono equations ka kya result banta hai theek hai put tab sin alpha equals to tac cos 20 in equation number 3 and let me know ki aapke paas kaun si equation banti hai so tab sin alpha ki value yahan se find kare aur isko is equation mein put kar de similarly tab cos alpha ki value yahan se find kare aur isko is equation mein put kar de so tab sin alpha is equals to uh, tac cos 20 TAB sin alpha is equals to TAC cos 20. You get one equation. Then you have from this equation you get TAB cos alpha is equals to 3.924 minus TAC sin 20. Okay. Now put TAB sin alpha this equation back into this particular equation. So you have TED cos twenty TED cos ten TED cos twenty minus TED ten. Plus TAB sine alpha and TAB sine alpha is equals to TAC cos twenty. So this is you have an equation. Then use this equation and put the value of TAB cos alpha in this equation. TED sine twenty, TED sine ten. Plus T A minus T A B cos alpha, minus T A B cos alpha, and T A B cos alpha is equals to this particular equation. So it gives you minus three point nine two four plus T A C sine twenty. to zero so now you have two equations and you have two unknowns the unknowns are ted and tac so now you can easily solve these two equations simultaneously to find out the unknowns ted and tac so now if you solve them simultaneously so ted comes out to be 21.23 kN and tac comes out to be 1.019 kN once these values are known to you you can easily find out tab and cos alpha so ted and tac are known to us now so tac put the value of tac in this equation and find out the value of tab sin alpha put the value of tac in this particular equation and find out the value of tab cos alpha So now you find out the the vertical component of uh, TAB and the horizontal component of um, TAB. So you can easily find out TAB is then equals to square root of the TAB sine alpha. जो भी value आपने ऊपर calculate की थी. Square plus TAB cos alpha square. ठीक है तो पैथोगोरस थ्योरम को यूज करके आप TAB की वैल्यू कैलकुलेट कर लेंगे एंड देन अल्फा इज नथिंग बट इक्वल टू एंजेंट इन वर्ड ऑफ टी ए बी साइन अल्फा डिवाइडेड बाई टी ए बी कॉज 
सिंपल फॉर्म तो अल्फा भी मालूम हो गया ठीक है सो दिस इज द वे हाउ यू कैन सॉल्व द प्रॉब्लम एनी क्वेश्चन टिल दिस पॉइंट if not so uh, please exercise uh, all the questions that are mentioned uh, uh, in today's lecture jo bhi questions humne class mein solve kiye hain wo tamam questions solve kare iske ba ilawa exercise mein bahut sare questions aapki practice ke liye given hai please try them as well uh, it's a three step procedure draw the free body diagram write down the equilibrium equation solve the equilibrium equation if the problem is related to the strength of materials so it's a four step procedure write down uh, draw the free body diagram write down the equilibrium equations write down the member forces in terms of the load p or w or whatever the applied load is and then after that uh, say that if this member force reaches to its maximum strength what will be the value of the applied load if the member force palana reaches to the maximum value what will be the uh, maximum load p and then select the Uh, smallest of those load p that will be the safest load p theek hai uh, so try these problems at home and if you have any questions so let me know in the next lecture uh, thank you very much for joining today's lecture with this i conclude lecture you may now leave the meeting